Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. My name is Keith. This is my good friend, Doug, and this is episode number 38. Doug, as always, we're at 38, man. We're getting we're getting close to that 50 mark. 38's good, you know, uh, less than uh, 19, 18 days, I'll be 38. So, Oh, snap. I know. So hey. this is like a magical episode, maybe. It yeah. is a magical episode. Well, actually, the next episode is going to be magical. I'm going to oh. hint at everybody. We got something special planned for Doug. It is, it, we are recording this in the month of Doug, what I call November, since so it's his birthday. And we have something special that I have been planning. Doug doesn't know anything about it. I have no so, idea. Yeah. If you're a regular listener and you want to see a surprise, definitely tune in for the next episode next week. Uh, however, this week we have an awesome episode as well. Before we jump into our normal things, uh, we're quickly heading into the Thanksgiving holiday at the time of this recording. One of the things that we're going to talk about in the nerd news kind of brings it up, and that is uh, Black Friday shopping. Do you Black Friday shop at all, Doug? I do. You know, the big ticket items, I think, are TVs, electronics, all that I've got all that, so I'm kind of looking for the finer things to get some deals things. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to do our own little Black Friday. However, we're not going to limit it or time box it. We're just going to set it up indefinite, and that is with our merch store. So if you're listening to this, if you've ever been interested in any of our cool merch that we have with our, you can see here on my microphone for those of you watching on video, uh, if you like Very our nice. logo uh, and you want to get a gift for somebody, but you just don't know how to get them, but you know they listen to our podcast or you know they're kind of geeky and nerdy, they love cool sci-fi movies or even, you know, just anything geeky. Uh, our merch is awesome for that. We've got tumblers. We've got gym bags. We've got hoodies. We've got t-shirts. Yep. We're going to drop the price on everything on the merch store. And we're not even going to time box it because we're that cool. You know, Doug and I do this for fun. We want everybody to enjoy uh, the show. So we're dropping the price on everything. Uh, so feel free to go out there and check it out. And it all becomes super affordable. Um, and that's kind of our little sale. I mean, that. I mean, that's a good way yeah. to put it, right? Our own little Black Friday. Absolutely. <laughs> and I like the idea of just getting our brand out there. Uh, I mean, we're not a huge brand like Nike or anything, but uh, definitely local. We're loyal to our fans, and we love doing what we're doing right now. And it's cool. As the episode numbers go up, I'm noticing our subs are going up as well. That's good. Yeah. Which is really cool. Like, we're seeing steady growth. So. Yeah. We want to encourage that. So anyway, we'll make sure, as always, that uh, in the show description, there's a link to our site that has a link to the merch store. There'll be, uh, upon this getting posted, we will make absolutely sure all the prices are dropped. And I think I'm finally going to pick up that hoodie, Doug. (laughs) My daughter got one. good. And she wore it. Yeah, I heard good things. Yeah, she wore it when she was home. I got to be honest, she got the pink one because it's all kind of like colors, right? She got the pink one. It looked awesome. And I was kind of (laughs) jealous. She's like, look at this. And I was like, I finally got to see it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get one. Uh, So yeah. Anyway. Great quality. They are. It's fun stuff. It's fun stuff. Anyway. All right. You ready to do this? Let's do it. All right. Let's queue up the nerd news. Nerd news. All right, Doug. I'm going to have you take this very, very first one here. I think it was one that you had thrown on there. So take it away, my friend. Yeah, I have to actually shout out to one of our uh, listeners, Anne. She uh, sent me to this. YouTube is cracking down on ad blockers. You know, YouTube, I, or not YouTube, Google, through their YouTube service, I think uh, 90% or 80% of their revenue comes just from uh, ads. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, we now have ads in Netflix, Disney, all your streaming stuff. I mean, I even have ads in my weather channel app on my phone. So. Ads are with us. They're here to stay. And it looks like YouTube is cracking down on those people that are trying to get rid of them. Yep. I mean, this is multifaceted, right? I I get why people use ad blockers, but I also get why Google is trying to crack down on it. Dude, I watch YouTube almost more than I do my paid services. I hate to say that. There's such great things out there. And what I like about it is I can jump in and jump out because I mean, most things are, I can look at it and go, oh, well, that's 15 minutes. I got 15 minutes, right? I can Mm -hmm. watch it. I don't mind ads. Um, and I, honestly, I like the ads whenever they're more specific to what I'm interested in. Yes. I, you know, yeah. when they have stuff that's not specific to me, it's kind of annoying. But I don't know. I don't mind ads as much. So I, it's a huge generation of revenue for them. So I kind of get why they're having to, to do this, yeah. to keep the content free. Otherwise, they're going to force everybody to be paying like Netflix and then keep hiking the mm-hmm. price up. Yeah, I believe reading the article, they said, you know, if you don't like ads, we have a premium service. They do. 
Well, that is a good response. I, I'm kind of on both sides of the field. I don't like the ads, but I also see that even though this company is worth billions and billions, they still need to make money. They still have employees to pay, all that stuff. So, so yeah, there's an overhead cost. Here's the thing that I always think about. And by the way, I just checked the premium plan. It's about the price of a Netflix is thirteen ninety nine a month, at least. Yeah. Now, they do have a student plan, believe it or not. So if you're a student out there, you could probably get um, a really good deal. Uh, what is yeah, that student? Oh, student plan is seven ninety nine. You know, oh, that, see, that's, that's a, cheaper than Netflix now. I think they went up. It will, oh yeah, that's cheaper. That's actually that's the price that Apple Plus was before the recent increase, which we talked about yep. last week. Um, but yeah, you're looking at thirteen ninety nine a month for um, an individual. If you want it for your family, uh, it can be twenty two ninety nine a month. Student seven ninety nine a month. Uh, I don't have it. Uh, definitely would entertain it, but um, and you, there's a lot of free movies. I think not free, but there's a lot of streaming movies that you get with this as well. So it isn't just YouTube yeah. content, but here's my thing. Uh, Google is a behemoth videos and just doing this podcast. Even, I mean, you look at a 45 minute episode is roughly a gig in size. And that is, you know, high def. It's not for, we don't do 4k, right? Yeah. Dude, can you imagine the amount of storage compute? I mean, just the cost of, housing all that video content uh, it's just it's mind boggling to me so yeah and i think the answer is not that we're siding with some huge uh, company or corporation but they've got a lot of bills to pay they need to uh, be profitable and pay their bills and uh, all that so yeah data center stuff is not cheap it really isn't yeah. so I get it. And I think for me, it's more about democratizing it. It's a great thing. You can get a full-blown education on YouTube. You know, yep. I mean, you Absolutely. really can. I, just I need finished to... my entire basement on YouTube uh, from yep. the electrical to the drywall to everything. It's been amazing. Yep. I'm not a car guy. Just this past week, I needed to uh, replace a light bulb in my car. And I've done it before, yep. but I don't do it often. And I Googled it and I was just like, oh, that refresher. Got it. Video how to. It cool. YouTube's amazing. Yeah, it really is. So we want to make sure that it's available. And I think the key of that would, would be this is yeah. ads, unfortunately. So yeah, and back to Anne, we'll wrap this up. Yep. Uh, you know, she had an ad blocker, her ad blocker wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And I kind of explained the same thing to her. I said, you know, uh, your ad blocker is probably not going to work. They're only trying to make money. And the good thing about YouTube is uh, a lot of the ads immediately comes up with a skip button. Uh, just skip that About ad five right seconds. Away. I think it's a five seconds yeah. and then a skip. Yeah. So. Anyway, be aware if you have an ad blocker, maybe impact it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. All right. Next one up is interesting because <laughs> we ended the last podcast where we interviewed our good friend Alex about the Star Citizen game. But Alex is a, is a cybersecurity expert. Um, and yeah. one of the things that popped up is one of Doug's favorite things to talk about. This little bad boy right here, if you're on the video, you'll see it. it's the flipper, uh, the flipper zero. Um, this thing cycles through radio frequencies and and can be used for hacking, essentially opening garage doors, things like that. However, with the release of iOS 17, which just launched not too long ago, about a month or so ago, there is a flaw that I'm sure will get patched in which one of these flipper zeros can flood the Bluetooth radio wave spectrum and essentially allow it to jack up an iPhone to crash it. Mm -hmm. It gets overwhelmed with all of the requests for uh, connections and on all the bands. And it basically overwhelms the, um, the radio in it and, and the, the OS crashes. So this is a huge flaw. And this is a great example. We were talking about, you know um, how these things can be used for uh, nefarious purposes. Um, but uh, I'm sure this will get patched, but be mindful that, you know, if you, seeing any weird or odd crash ups make sure you don't have any weirdos around you that may be using a flipper zero on you <laughs> so yeah just uh i'm amazed at how much this thing does i'm also kind of scared you know with the uh, movies and video games like cyberpunk hacking into people's brains and stuff <laughs> um one question i have for you and not to extend it too much is uh apple has uh is it nearby share or what's the name of it or airdrop Airdrop. Yep. So I've watched, you know, videos on YouTube of people airdropping messages and stuff on planes and in malls. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would worry about is there's, it seems like there's no security to get a random message on airdrop or something. Well, it's on 
that's where it, it gets to the consumer. AirDrop only works if the other person accepts the file. So if I oh, okay. ran, so if I were to be at an airport and I were to share a photo and I choose AirDrop, it's going to show me. And also, AirDrop is turned on by the user, so you can choose to turn it on or turn it off. So if somebody has their AirDrop enabled wide open all the time, and I go to an which a lot of people do, if I go to an airport, I could see all these people, and I could technically tap on each one of them and AirDrop it. But all that does is it pings them and says. Key iPhone wants to send you a photo or something. Yes. And it even shows you a preview. They have to hit yes. So one, you have to have it enabled all the time for, for accepting something all the time. Two, uh, you have to be able to accept it as well. So if you're being okay. as careless as it's kind of like when you tell people don't click on, you know, all of the pop-up ads, uh, you just, you got to be cautious because this is where it'll burn you. So that that's the thing with AirDrop. Now it's okay. really fast. It's great. If you had like, you know, we're talking like 50 photos to give to somebody. It's the best way to do it oh. because it transfers really quick and you just have to be sitting next to each other. It does not work in far geographic locations. You got to be sitting next to each other because it does uh, go over near field communication. Typically, I think it's Bluetooth, believe it or not. Gotcha. So, yeah, I question. believe with the uh, Android 14, we are going to get some nearby share capabilities mm -hmm. with this latest uh, OS. So yeah. that'll be cool. Yeah. And there was a cool thing with iOS 17. And it's really, it's cool because it's kind of gimmicky, but <clears throat> to share uh, contacts, if I choose share contact and you have an iPhone and we take the iPhones and you put them like together, like the tops of them, it does this cool like warp animation across both screens synchronously oh, and it sends cool. you the contact. And so stuff like that, yeah. it's kind of cool, but it's using similar technology. So pretty cool. All right. It would not be the year of Wired Nerdy without what, Doug? AI. You know, there's going to be a week that, and I've said this the last couple episodes. <laughs> I don't know if there will be. When we get a non-AI uh, news uh, segment, it's going to be, hey, what the heck's going on? So. <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen. I don't know if that'll yeah, happen. Probably not. But uh, high hopes there. <laughs> All right. So this one, there's not much news. It's more of an announcement. Um, for this week, they said this this particular weekend... Uh, the uh, new AI is being launched by Elon Musk. It, he started a company back in June-ish, if I remember right, or the summer. It was called X AI. I don't know what his obsession with X is, but whatever. He named um, one of his children X or something. He did. Like, it's like a math equation. I don't know. Poor kid. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so he they announced that they're going to launch their AI as if we need another one um, this weekend. It's a soft launch, so that means it's by invite only, but it, it will be interesting to see how it's different. I mean, you, we had conversations earlier on about the differences between Bard versus ChatGPT and things of that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and it's important to know that while this is going on, there has been news about global conferences taking place about AI where governments are getting together and they're putting together uh, rules for responsible AI governance. Uh, so it's interesting that they're trying to put rules on it because of the concerns about it. Um, and it is also interesting to me that he's been one of the most vocal about worrying about AI becoming sentient and destroying, but yet he has his own AI. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I, I wonder if it's any good compared to like Bard or ChatGPT. That's, that's what's going to be interesting. It will be interesting because I don't know if uh, he has the engineers and the uh, data people like Google and Microsoft to do the back end work to make the AI successful. I don't know, different kinds of company. I mean, definitely, yeah. you look at the skill set of uh, software engineers that they have within, you know, Space uh, X uh, and mm -hmm. things like that. That makes total There's sense. pretty brilliant minds. Yes. Oh, completely. It's amazing people. I don't know about the AI, but maybe they've been hiring up. I don't know. Maybe they have. AI is pretty hot right now in the, the field, but it's hard. It says you have to have AI experience mm -hmm. with language learning models. And honestly, it's thin. You have to be messing with it on your own because it's all so new. So. Yeah, right, we'll see where this goes. And I think, uh, like with anything, uh, it'll uh, provide good competition for the others to make theirs better. So That is true. We will see where it goes. I'll let you take this next one. If you have not seen it, uh, I don't blame these people for being upset, but take the next one. Yeah. It uh, looks like some of the Microsoft employees are losing their perk of getting Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for free. They're going to have to start paying for it now. I'm sure, uh, you know, it says they have about 238,000 employees. 
if you multiply that by the time of uh, the Xbox Game Pass, I'm sure they're losing a ton of money. So makes sense. I don't blame them for being and, mad, though. That's one heck of a yeah. perk, man. <laughs> now, I would hope that in lieu of employee cuts, they start uh, cutting perks so employees can keep their jobs. That's the positive True. thing I would look at. Actually, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of it that way. I mean, you also have to remember that Microsoft has some major acquisitions. Uh, they bought Bethesda, which was huge. They just finished buying Blizzard Activate, Activision. We're talking Warcraft. I mean, all of them. I mean, that's some yeah. pretty big company. Like, that library is getting huge of what they can oh, put on Game Pass. It's impressive. So yeah. I did the math here. Uh, right now, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is $16.99. Mm-hmm. Um, multiplied by 238,000 employees, that is over $4.4 million. Whoa. In in revenue that they could be getting. It's not lost, yes. per se, so, outside I mean, of, you know, cost I'm of sure running I'm sure that's a, just a chip in the barrel or a uh, whatever the saying is of what their total profit is yeah but i mean that's quite a bit what i would look for them to do if they're going to take the service away give it at a discount to your yes. employees like absolutely keep, like you're yeah, still like, getting money yeah yeah instead of it being you know 16 dollars, you know cut that in half or make yep. it only six dollars or five dollars a month you know i think mm-hmm. that that but keep I in agree. mind i doubt all 238,000 are leveraging it. There's probably a percentage, you know, of the employees that use it, and then there's a percentage that aren't gamers and don't care. Yeah. So, but oh, if yeah. I worked there and I had this perk, I'd be kind of sad too. So I don't blame I would them. too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's an awesome perk. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. All right. Now, there was a big event. Uh, it was short, and they called Very it. Short. Yeah, they called it. Uh, it was Apple. They had their scary October fast, or sorry, I, I said that wrong. Their October scary fast event. It was short. It was only like thirty minutes long. Um, you know, the big big things on this of what was announced is uh, their their chip. And they were on M two. Yep. Now they're on M three. There's an M three, M three Pro, M three Max. You know, so with that, they also are going to put that chip, which is faster, obviously, because um, the M two is. And M1s are already just mind-boggling impressive. They um, refreshed their hardware product line, specifically the MacBook Pro. They have a 14 and a 16-inch, and it's in black. Everybody's excited about the black color. It's been a long... I don't know if... I can't recall if there was a black I haven't seen color. a black uh, MacBook in a yeah. long time, if ever. If ever, yeah, unless it was custom. Yeah. And then, of course, the iMac, uh, which is beautiful. I love these things. <clears throat> if I didn't have a full-blown gaming machine, I'd probably do an iMac because... Dude, look how thin they are. And those vibrant colors look great. You know, they have yeah. colors in different phones and technology. And when they come out with that, just not the boring gray or black, it looks yep. great. And they just don't take up much space on your desk. I mean, they're beautiful. No, that machines. is razor thin, it looks like. Oh, it is. But if you look at it, like the iPads have the M chimp in them. Now, they're essentially attaching an iPad to a stand, uh, yep. but putting Mac OS on it, which... Mm-hmm. But that's awesome because those M chips can just run like crazy. I, I, there's going to be a game mode, they're saying, for the new version of uh, Mac OS Sonoma and then combined with the M3. And I'm wondering what that means. If we could ever get to the point that Mac OS could emulate, you know, regular game sets that are in Steam uh, that are on run on x86 chipsets, PCs. I don't know. I think the Mac could become a contender for actually being a decent gaming machine at some point with what they're doing with these chips are impressive. So definitely. Yeah. You don't hear a lot of people saying, well, I game on a Mac. So for them to get into the gaming world would be a big for them. I think when a lot of it's availability, it's a library availability. A lot of developers do not develop for Mac um, just for a lot of reasons. However, it's getting compelling for them to develop with Mac because these M chips are just really impressive. On the forefront of that, though, um, we don't have it as an official news piece, but there's a partnership uh, with Intel and I believe Qualcomm. And essentially, they're going to put together a competitor for the M chip for the the PC line that's coming down the way. So you you just said competition's good. That's about to happen with these chips. So. Yeah, I think uh, to reiterate it, competition only helps us as consumers. Definitely. All right. You got this next one, my friend. Yeah, Diablo 4. Uh, we knew some expansions were coming out. It looks like they just announced uh, their first expansions can come out late 2024, so we believe it's still in development. It is the Vessel of Hatred. 
Um, but the, we don't have a specific month for you, so look out for that. Outside it of looks it's, like it's coming, uh, they've yeah. also announced a new uh, class. Mm-hmm. Did they say what the um, class was? Yeah, and I'm looking there. I don't know that they did. Because I, I, I remember I was flipping through it, and I'm sure I'll get yelled at if I don't, but I was glancing through it, and I don't recall if they actually say it now. I don't think they announced it, no. No, but they do have a um, you know, a, a little teaser video, but it doesn't, doesn't do much. It just basically spans across a forest and a landscape, and then it comes to a horizon with a, either a sunset or a sunrise. And, hmm. I mean, that's essentially it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good game. You know, we've but... all, yeah, we all played Diablo Four. Uh, Starfield came out. It has just taken all my time. And then the uh, new expansion for Cyberpunk came out. I started Cyberpunk again. I so have not started that. Yeah, it's on my I list. I would love to get back to Diablo Four, but to me, and people say I, I'm uh, say whatever you want, but I cannot do these dungeons alone. I have to have a party. You know, you go in these dungeons. Things are coming at you from all sides. It's very hard. Well, it's not just you, though. On top of that, they said that with this game, it is one of the ones that had the fastest drop rate of people. They played it like mad, but it got this one had a feeling of more repetition than the priors, and it didn't feel as the dungeons uh, all seem the same to me. And this is the first Diablo I've ever played that felt I love it. It was great, but it's like uh, this isn't the game I play all the time. Yeah, the older ones I can tell you had more variety, at least from what I experienced with with four. Four is great, it's good, but it's just yeah. the playability. So I see why they're they're probably pushing this out to try to keep it relevant and keep people interested gotcha. in it. So all right. Before we get to that, I'm going to jump over to this one before we get to our last one. Okay. Um, Sounds good. NASA had some interesting information, and this falls into the science category of our wild nerdy interest. Uh, they discovered that there's an asteroid they've been keeping an eye on called Dinky. It's a funny name. It actually has its own moon, it, and that's oh. never been seen before and not expected. What that essentially means is that this massive asteroid has another rock within its orbit, and they even release footage, if I if you're watching on video, I'll play. Um, <clears throat> but they actually have released a series of images, and they synced them together to show what they mean. And it shows the asteroid floating there in space, and it has the you know the size ratio of it, because it's pretty decent sized. Uh, but then they show this other asteroid, the small rock, floating around it, like within its orbit. And so up to this point, we had never really confirmed whether or not if there's enough of a mass of something like that, that it could pull something within orbit. And this has done that. So it's fascinating. An asteroid. It is really cool. With a moon. So it gives you an insight to, uh, and I'm not a rocket scientist, but uh, like gravitational pull. So you got to think that um, Dinky is so large that uh, it's got its own gravitational pull and something is uh, being pulled around it. Yeah, it's really cool. I thought that was a a really neat, uh, really neat finding that they had. You know, the only thing I know about asteroids are like in video games, and I don't know how accurate that is. Yeah. (laughs) All I know is I had a bunch of bases on the bottom. I'd shoot missiles up and stop (laughs) them. Oh, different asteroid or whatever. So that was Missile Commander. If if, yeah, but if you had a base on that asteroid, how cool would that be? You have that rock flying around a prevent people from landing on it. Okay, so aluminum hat. Oh God. Here we go. What is on the dark side of the moon? And we'll skip to the next topic. <laughs> Doug and his conspiracy theories. So well, we'll have, we're definitely going to dive into some of those creepy ones. Actually, today's main topic kind of does get into some conspiracy theory yeah. stuff in a way. We'll have a uh, uh, lot to talk about. All right. So our, our, our last one that we're rounding out, as we mentioned at the beginning of the call, Doug, take it away. This is kind of tied to what we talked about at the very beginning. Yeah, as we all know, uh, November means uh, Black Friday. No, it means Thanksgiving. But uh, with blanks, <laughs> with uh, blank, with Thanksgiving comes uh, Black Friday, and uh, we're going to share with you some of the best deals we've seen. Uh, Early you know, announcement deals. A lot of companies. Yeah. yeah, a lot of companies share their best. You know, we looked through multiple websites, and and Gadget seems to have one of the best lists I've seen. Mm-hmm. So we're going to just go down these slowly. Uh, AirPods. Uh, I know you've got some AirPods, right? Oh, love them. Yeah, they're right here. This looks like a great deal. I mean, one ninety for a really nice set. And I know Apple's a little bit higher, but their build quality oh, and everything. I love them. Buy them. Yeah. I've heard good the things about Be- the next one, though. The Beats. Yeah, Beats Pro. Um, mm-hmm. Dr. Dre, I believe, invented the Beats company. 
Yeah, he invested into it, started now. Apple invested owns it. into it. Yep. Apple owns so. it now. So it has a uh, a chip in it that's very similar to the AirPods. It has a similar chip to it. It pairs re- really, really well uh, with Apple products. But it also the nice thing is it works. I would dare say a little bit better even with Android products as well, but it's good for working out because of the way they fit in. But I've heard only good things about their, their sound quality. I've not used them myself though. Yeah. Uh, the next two will help you uh, with some streaming services, the uh, fire stick and the Chromecast with Google TV. Now the Chromecast with Google TV I've had, it works great. It's got a nice little remote. Uh, you can hold a button and talk to your Google assistant on the remote for Netflix and shows you're watching. And the one thing I do want to know, and I don't know if we mentioned it, uh, the AirPods are normally. Let's start at the beginning. They're normally two fifty. They're one ninety. Mm-hmm. The Beats Pro are normally two hundred. They're one sixty. Um, and the Amazon Fire Stick that Doug just mentioned, normally fifty bucks. It's thirty. So I don't think we were mentioning prices there. And all this is on nope. Amazon, just so you know. And the uh, Chromecast is normally fifty. It's thirty nine. Mm-hmm. So uh, all good prices so far. The the next one is for your smart homes. And uh, playing some music, it's the Amazon Show Echo 5. Normally 90, it's on sale for 40. That's a heck of a discount. It's a, yeah, that's a really good deal. And they do the same for the Google Nest Hub, which is their version of that. Uh, mm-hmm. Normally 100 bucks, it's 60 bucks. So Great. As we go down the list, I'll let you pick some out. Um, things that uh, catch my eye are the Roomba. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually in the market for a new robot vacuum. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Before you uh, do, talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah. I have a good suggestion for you. So I do. Maybe we need an article about Doug's picking a new Roomba. That'd hey, there good. you go. Maybe we'll do that because I just had to replace mine, and I did mm, okay. tons of research. And I'll tell you what so I found. So we've got uh, I love the one acid I got. stain, concrete floors, and the cat yep. hair. Not to say my house is dirty, but well, the one that I ended up getting, and this is why I think we need to talk, is that it doesn't just vacuum; it mops. Oh, now Ooh. that would help big time. Yeah, so we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah, so that Roomba on Black Friday, uh, two seventy five. It's on sale for one fifty nine. That's a uh, quite the discount there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course they have iPads on sale normally. Yeah, uh, three twenty nine, and this has the M chip in it. We were just talking about it's two forty nine. Uh, yeah. If you're into Google, look at that Google tablet, man. That ain't bad. $100 yeah. Off. And that just came out and it's already $100 off. Uh, $4.99 normal, $3.99 for Black Friday. That's not a bad price. Yeah. And that's the thing you got to care about Black Friday because some of these things, you'll catch them and it's not that great of a deal, right? Yeah. But these are ones that are actually have pretty deep cut discounts on them. That LG 48 inch, there's a 4K. Look at the discount on that. Yeah. That bad boy Norm- normally is 1300 and it is yeah. five hundred and fifty dollars. So, and I yeah. have not heard anything bad about LGs. No, they're great. Uh, I own an LG. I love of, it. Mm-hmm. Kind of a side note: uh, our Vizio, we've been having some issues with it, uh, remote control and stuff. We just bought a TCL uh, with Google TV on it. I Do you love like it? that thing. I have yep. a TCL, and I love it. The picture quality. I mean, don't let the 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 name scare you. It, gosh, yeah. it's so good. Looks honestly a little better than even my. Uh, my LG. I hate to say that it has yeah. a little bit of a sharper picture at times, but it's a smaller TV too because the other one's larger. But yeah, yeah, we just talked about it. Uh, the MacBook. There's a MacBook on there. Um, Two hundred dollar discount, but that's still a little bit of a savings. Yeah, for a pretty powerful machine. Yep, that is true. So there's some really really good ones out there. So yeah. definitely keep your eyes peeled, and uh, it's always fun to kind of see. It's really good to pick up the smaller things too, microphones, uh, headsets. Uh, it's really those they usually have a pretty decent discount because they're really good for stocking stuffers and for gifts for people. So. Mm-hmm. All, All right, right. Uh, pretty good uh, news today. Appreciate there was a that. lot. There was a lot there. Yeah. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead and queue up our main thing now. I mentioned that it's a bit conspiratorial, and it is. And what we thought would be interesting would be to go down the rabbit hole. Anytime there is a major franchise, we're talking Jurassic Park, Star Wars. We're talking like staples of geekdom. There are always people who, conspiracy theorists, that have fan theories, and some of them are out there. Some of them are really good and can almost enhance the story. We wanted to test the waters on talking about one of those today. And uh, so to mix it up a little bit, uh, today we were like, you know what, let's, uh, let's kind of dive into one of those. And it is yeah. Back to the Future. 
so you, Doug, you've seen all three Back to the Futures classics. One of my favorites. Have yep. you? You've seen them all, right? Great movies. Yep. I've seen them numerous times. I love them very, very much. Special place in my heart. Uh, so we're going to walk through some of these and just kind of have fun with what people think about them. Some of them are really out there. Now, I do have to warn you, some of them I'm just going to have to kind of like read because they're relatively complex. Because as you know, uh, Back to the Future deals with time travel. If you have not seen these movies, go pause the podcast, go watch them. I'm sure you'll find them on a streaming service. They're worth watching. They're classics. They're really good. Uh, so uh, the first one I'll just go ahead and take, if you don't mind there, Doug, is uh, um, the idea that his dad actually would have figured out that he was a time traveler. So let me explain this. So if you remember, he's trying to get his mom and his dad together uh, in the movie and he dresses up in a radiation suit, pretends to be an alien, but he makes all these references to his name is Calvin Klein. He says he's Darth Vader. Uh, and he, you know, plays Van Halen music in the headphones of him when he wakes him up. Well, if you also remember his dad was a nerd and he loved sci-fi and like Jules Verne and things like that, Orson Welles, but he also read comic books. And his dad would have grown up. I'm pretty sure his dad would have put two and two together, especially as you grow up and all of a sudden Calvin Klein disappears from your life after the prom. And uh, all of a sudden, all these references that he was making uh, an actual Calvin Klein designer and all of that kind of stuff, you know, Clint Eastwood references, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. His dad probably would have figured it out. However, his dad would not have said anything because he would have known enough about um, the timeline stuff to where he just kind of kept it to himself. So. Theory one, his dad actually knew about the time travel or could have figured it out. What do you think? Is this plausible? What are your thoughts on this one? I think so as well. Um, there was a website a, a while ago that I looked at that has rules of time travel. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's certain rules about going back in time. You know, one little change is going to ripple through uh, eons and eons. So I think he would know that if he mentioned something, it would mess up the uh time travel paradox or whatever mm -hmm. that uh, word is so. which this movie probably has one of the best descriptions it's probably one of the more simplified time travel movies because doc brown explains you know the line he draws on the mm -hmm. chalkboard yeah. and he says you make a change you're breaking the line thus creating yeah. an alternate timeline which we're going to get into that here in a minute with some of these um this one is is weird and a little dark yeah yeah do you want to take this one you might yeah, have to so, read it because uh, <laughs> this one's complex theories. Yeah, go it ahead and is. read this one. Uh, Doc Brown murders Marty. And uh, it says, since Marty changed the timeline in 55, uh, so George could become a success. Uh, and then it talks about him uh, time travel burning up upon traveling through time. There's a bunch of different elements to connect this. But the fan theory that um, Doc Brown murders Marty is wild. Yeah, essentially... This one is complex to me in that yeah. um, it talks. It basically says that the theory states that Doc Brown rigged the new time machine to burn up upon traveling through time, killing the new timelines, Marty, so that the old one could go ahead and go back in time and set it. Uh, he does this knowing that Mar that the Marty he met in 1955 would shortly return, letting him still have the ability to travel through time while closing a loop at the same time. I think this one's a bit convoluted. That's my take. It is. I think the uh, premise of it is he's trying to collapse the alternate timelines back into the single line of stability. Yeah. I'm trying to use fancy words here. No, so. but it's no, you're spot on. But the other thing is this flies as a writer and somebody who loves stories, this flies in the face of the character of Doc Brown. Marty yep. and him have this relationship that's almost parental. And mm -hmm. I don't, and while he holds very strict to the rules of the time travel, I don't think he would hurt Marty. I don't know. That's my take on it. I think there's a, an element to this that, you know, yep. Now this one I love. <laughs> so this one is that, and I've heard this one before, and I think this one's really cool. And this one can be complex, but it's good. And it kind of does make sense. It's that doc ends up saving Marty from Biff. Now this goes a step further. So if you remember, there's moments throughout the film one two and three uh where doc just seems to show up out of nowhere to save marty so one of them is like when he's being chased by biff and the the dangerous you know he's on the the hoverboard and he's being chased um and biff ends up crashing into the poop truck and all of that out of yeah. nowhere um doc brown flies the delorean and i think this was in the second one and he drops the flags down and and saves him 
The other one is when he goes to the future, Biff corners him, old Biff, on the roof, and he has a gun. And Marty gets up on the edge, and he looks down below, and he sees the DeLorean down below, and he just basically jumps off the building, and he lands in the DeLorean. Uh, th- those happen over and over and over throughout all three movies. And you can pick where Doc kind of comes out of nowhere. The theory is, is that Marty had actually gone back numerous times, died. One of the, the, the Docs find out in the timelines, they go back to stop that from happening so that it can eventually correct itself in the timeline. I think it's a cool, I think it's a cool theory. I think it is. And I think it shows, uh, in the three movies, mm-hmm. um, there's definitely some it's references plausible. to that. It's plausible. Yeah. Cause he does I, seem I like to, that one as well. He does just seem to show up out of nowhere. Like how would he know that's where Marty would have been Yeah. to pick him up? How would he know to have flown the DeLorean, you know, to Biff's tower at that exact time mm-hmm. at that exact spot. Yep. Yeah. So I like that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. I think it's a sweet one. I like that too. Now this one seems like a given for the movie, but, it does. uh, doc's views on time travel change as the uh, three movies progress. Mm hmm. You know, uh, one of the examples they give is in the scene where Marty goes back to 85. Uh, Doc, uh, he tells Doc what happened with the dance and George punched Biff out. Mm -hmm. Uh, So to this, Doc is like, well, this alternative timeline is okay because it probably teaches us something or helps us uh, in the future and builds character upon the people that were affected. It does, because at the beginning of the film, he's so strict about not changing the timeline. But then I don't know that this is. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, but then he realizes that, well, not all changes are bad. That's really ultimately what the theory is, which I think is good. And I think that's a good theory. Yeah. And that's what I was just going to say. Yep. Well, and it's reinforced in episode or number three. Remember how that one ended? The dude made a train time machine after the DeLoreans destroyed. I mean, he obviously like definitely changed his view on time travel because he, I mean, married Clara and had two kids, Jules and Vern. Yep. <laughs> so he definitely had to have changed his, you know, view of it. So, so similar to that, I'm going to uh, cross universes over to Marvel and, um, Captain America. Mm-hmm. You know, he, uh, goes back in time to, uh, marry his, uh, lady. Oh, and right. I cannot think of her name. I'm so I sorry. Know, I know what you're talking about, but, uh, that's one, uh, reference to eh, let's change it up a little bit so and i thought it was a great ending yes and uh my friend matt is gonna kill me for not knowing captain america's uh lady's name so yeah he's he's going to uh uh definitely not like that i actually typed in uh captain marvel remember i'm, <laughs> I'm a dc guy so that, that's my my excuse so you know matt can't get mad at me but he can yeah. definitely get mad at you carter Peggy Carter. Uh, there this is go. Carter. Yeah, she, so he goes back spy. in time to marry Carter, and they have a wonderful life together, and he essentially retires. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was a great way to end the movie. Yep. So, back on track, uh, we look at Marty picking up that sports almanac, I believe, in the second movie. Mm-hmm. And it causes um, all kinds of troubles. <laughs> yeah. And the, the theory is that the sports almanac can change just like Marty's picture. You know, Makes total we sense. saw the picture the people disappear as the timeline's getting messed up. Um, I'm absolutely in agreement with this fan mm-hmm. theory. I think anything you change, uh, you'll see an immediate change in the future. So, Well, and what's cool about it, the theory points out that that almanac becomes super powerful because no matter yes. which timeline you're in, the almanac would change to match it. So you could always win. Think about that. You always would, if your bets would always be on point. So that's, that's heavy. And if the picture changed, why wouldn't this? It's a, it's a, absolutely. It's an artifact. It's a piece of, it's a document. Um, I like this one. I think this one makes sense. And this one is doc invented present day technology in back to future three, the Western, which is an awesome one, by the way. Um, he does things in his shop to make his life easier. He makes ice cubes. He has that cool little model. He has electricity. <laughs> he has yeah. all kinds of cool stuff. So the idea is that since he's an inventor, he had already invented several things in 1885 that shouldn't exist. And it goes on that it would make sense that, um, according to theory, all that alters the timeline so that in innovations like this are discovered quicker at a quicker pace 
which supports a lot of people criticize. And they said that um, in Back to Future 2, when they go to the year 2015, it obviously we all live through the t- year 2015. And of course, we know the movies were made a lot a long time ago, so they were projecting. But they had like the 3D Jaws shark. They have the hoverboards, things that we don't have today. And a lot of people criticize, well, that movie didn't age very well because that's not how 2015 was. The fan theory is that 2015 was more advanced than our real timeline 2015 because in 1885, Doc doing those inventions earlier, they get discovered. It could have accelerated technology. I think that's a good one. Yep. I think that totally makes sense. Yep. Yep. That's a good one. I like that one. Yep. Uh, we're going to skip this one. It didn't make any sense to me. Um, it, I just read it and I'm thinking, I don't know how to explain that. The only thing I can say is like the Lockhart theory, which is a theory about time. It, it, everything is a loop. Everything always goes back yeah. full circle. And this one just, and it, it's not a very good one. It basically says that the whole series is one big loop, meaning, you know, the creation of the DeLorean at the beginning versus it getting destroyed at the end. I don't know. I didn't like this one as much. We're going to skip on that. Well, I don't like it for the fact that time seems to be... And if I'm using my words right, linear, like a straight line, it can't yeah. go back on itself because you've already made the changes. So, yeah. I mean, we're uh, getting deep in this episode. I know, but that's I know, just heavy. My thought. <laughs> that's what they say in uh, Back to Future, heavy. Yes. I love this one. I'm going to let you take this one. I love it. Yeah, the DeLorean itself cannot make paradoxes. And to explain that, um, there's multiple times when the DeLorean prevents supposed paradoxes from taking place. You know, the DeLorean ensures that uh, no paradoxes can occur and jeopardize the final timeline. So we have to think, is there some sort of AI built into the DeLorean Could that's be. helping Doc and Marty throughout their adventures? Who knows if it's an AI? If it's a, I love this because the car itself is almost yeah. a character in the movie. It is, um, absolutely. And it does always break at really opportune times, you know, both yeah. in one, two and three. It is not available. It won't start. When he's, you know, it won't, or the wheels yeah. <laughs> blow out uh, because of the fire. I mean, it's like, that's a key yeah. part of it is I got to get the DeLorean going again. And I need Doc's help to do that. And mm-hmm. it does, and it does point out that um, it stop it, it being in a situation where it stops working always seems to prevent him from doing something like meeting, you know, certain people that would totally blow up the timeline, you know? Yeah. So I like that one. I think that's a really, really good one. I'll let you grab this one. Oh, okay. And... This one, uh, I'm not crazy about it because it's weird. The idea behind yeah. it is if you remember, uh, Marty felt bad because he knows that Doc dies. At the beginning of the first movie, the Libyans, who he stole the plutonium from, shoot him right in front of him. Um, yeah. And what's crazy about this is so he wrote a letter and he gave it to him. And then in the movie, Doc freaked out and he's like, no, 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 I don't want to know. You can't do this. You can't alternate. And he tears it up, throws it away. And then, you know, Later on in the series, there he, there is the letter that he finds by the grave and all that. The theory about this, the handwriting is different. The theory is, is that Marty ended up rewriting the letter at a different stage or different timeline or later on. And that's why the handwriting is different. To me, I don't buy that because I don't think his handwriting would be that much different. So I don't know. It's And that's why I wanted you to read it because I kind of agree yeah. with the same thing. I, I don't. I'm not crazy about this one. This one's not as plausible. I think it's a reach. But all right. And then the last one on the list uh, seems like Could. it. Obviously, Maybe. but yeah, Doc time traveled before Marty. You know, we start with the uh, scene in the parking lot. The famous uh, uh, was it? Oh, I'm Einstein. gonna get hate mail. The dog. But I was saying uh, speed. Was it 85 miles? 60. Miles. 85 mile mm-hmm. an hour. See, I almost said 65. Dang it. Dude, so I've the famous so scene times. there, Marty the dog. <laughs> but uh, this theory describes how Doc back in the 60s managed to invent time travel. And then he um, took the dog with him. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think the theory behind this is that Doc, remember, he fell off his toilet in the 60s, hit his head, came up with it. The idea is that, well, he actually invented time travel back then, went and traveled, realized what terrible repercussions it cost. And then what he did was he he came back and prevented himself from inventing it in 1960. That erased his memory. Thus, he gets to 1985 and it's always plugged him and he ends up coming up with it anyway. Now, I get it. Probably possible. But 
Mm, I don't think it adds much to the story. And let's not get around the fact that I think they said in the movie, he ends up using nuclear power to make this happen. You could not. I mean, that's why he stole from the Libyans, like because it's the eighties and nuclear proliferation is, you know, pretty heavy, but he wouldn't have been able to have gotten anything nuclear related in 1960. I mean, they just, we just discovered the bomb in the 1940s, you know, late forties dropped it in the fifties, uh, early fifties, late forties, um, with our testing in Manhattan project and all that. So I don't know. I think it would, unless he had a different power source, granted, unless he had figured out he could use lightning, but I just don't think he would be able to get the components together in 1960 to actually make it happen. That's my theory. I, that's why the technology doesn't match. If he were to have made something in 1960 and go back, I just don't think he could got his hands on it. That's the thing about the 1985 DeLorean is that he had all the stuff he needed in order to do it because it finally came to be. He came up with the theory of the flux capacitor in the 60s, but he couldn't make it happen. Get to the 1980s, yeah. the parts are now readily available. He could do it. So, I don't know. I don't buy this. So, nope, I think you got something there. Now, a fun fact about this movie. Uh, I read the original script, and here's the hilarious part. The original script, most people know this, it was not a DeLorean. It was a pickup truck. And the time machine was in the back of the picnic truck or a pickup truck in the bed. Yeah. And they were supposed to drive to uh, a, a testing field for nuclear bombs. And they had to drive the truck into the nuclear bomb right as it dropped and detonated. And that's what initiated it. Ooh. It got yeah. nixed by Universal. Because in the script, it was because it was going to cost them too much money on visual effects to do a nuclear blast and all of that. And so last minute, they had to make that script change. One of the people came up with the projection that they were like, well, what if we just make it a car? Well, what's a unique car? Well, at the time, the DeLorean. So the DeLorean was not in the original script and it wasn't supposed to be that way. They had to change the mechanics of it. There's really a pickup truck now that was supposed to drive into a nuclear bomb. <laughs> so. Fun fact for you all out there. That's not a theory. That's that's true. You can you can fact check me on that. So I would assume, and this is my theory, that they didn't do that plot because they didn't have old Christopher Nolan, you know, uh, making the largest explosion with Oppenheimer. So. <laughs> the technology wasn't there for them to do it. They no, hadn't done yeah, Jurassic just Park like we yet, right? Explained with the uh, 1960, 1985. That's yeah. right. It's the same thing. See, full circle, the Lockheed effect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What Maybe it is right. I think we're in the matrix, but what if we're in a lock? You're blowing my mind. All right, okay. man. That awesome. was fun. <laughs> so yeah, you know, and it's fun. Like we may do more of these where there are a lot of movies. I tell you what, you can go really deep into like movies like the Terminator. You talk about time travel. Like there, there are some crazy fan theories um, for a lot of these. And so these, you know, this is a fun conversation. It's fun to have. Sometimes it gets a little deep. Uh, you know, it dances on that conspiracy theory line on a lot of these, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's amazing that many of them get made the way that they are. And so it's yeah. funny to see what people do when they read into them. I like them a lot. That's a rabbit hole. We'll have to go down. Definitely. All right, everyone. Yeah. I think that rounds us out for episode number 38. It was a yeah. fun time. Definitely stay tuned for next week. We're going to have our special uh, Doug Extravaganza episode. Uh, he doesn't even know what it's in for. That's why he's I looking have no idea what you're planning. No so. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned for that. Also, make sure you go out, check out the Wired Nerdy merch store. Now that we're heading to the holidays. Get that uh, listener something they like. Get some for yourself. You deserve it. It'll all be uh, way cheaper than what it was before uh, for Absolutely. all of our stuff. So other than that, we appreciate you. And uh, Doug, bring us on home, man. Yeah, thank you all for listening. Uh, we appreciate everything. Uh, we're tackling topics and uh, discussions you all want to uh, learn about and talk about. So keep sending us those ideas. Keep listening and supporting us. Uh, we appreciate you all a lot. And we're having a great time. All right, everyone. You have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.